But Thursday, I will, you know, I will aim, you know, I, I will spend some time with every one of you, you know. So there's, you know, if everyone comes, there's like about nine or so people in this class. So that would be, you know, close to ten minutes, seven to ten minutes, ten-ish minutes um, per person, and and we'll do that. If you do not have a laptop, bring it on a thumb, bring your apps on a thumb drive or whatever, and we'll load it on mine and take a look at it. Okay, so I, I do want to do that. And again, um, even if everything's going great. We can sit and we can talk about how great things are going and talk about what's next. Yes? Yep. I don't know what you mean. I, I, I'm thinking that um, that one folder really isn't anything. It, it's, like, it's like kind of a ghost folder. Um, so I think there's only one meaningful folder when I send that, but no, you don't, you don't really have to do anything. In other words, the stuff that you upload to Canvas works for me, um, and especially with Android Studio now. I, I've had less and less problems with Android Studio as time has gone on and all that. Today what we will do is today I will cover um, the rest of the questions that we were asked last time and um, then see if there's anything new that's fuzzy. Um, if not, there is one thing I do want to talk about relating to the blackjack game. I, I, for, for once, I have pretty much caught up on grading, at least in this class goes, um, even up through the quiz. Um, so um, if you've turned it in, I, I think I did that yesterday, I think. Um, so if you turn anything yesterday or before, it should be graded. So go out and take a look. and. Please read my comments. And, and the comments are not meant to necessarily explain everything, but the comments are there for you to uh, take a look at in a spur discussion, you know, so that you can ask me about them and, and I can respond to it. All right, anyhow, I do have the sheet from last time. No, just there's like a couple quizzes and a final. All right. So, if I'm not mistaken, we have gotten through one, two, three. We have four of these left. And, oh, I also like to make an announcement. I made a rookie mistake, all right, on the pizza class. Let me, let me show you that and talk about that a bit. A rookie mistake, yes. And I did not count off for it the one person that that caused a problem for. So I did not count off for yours, because that was my mistake. And I'll show you what the mistake is as soon as I remember the name of the website that I want to go to, Canvas. <laughs> did we work around your mistake? Yes. Okay, it's, it's possible. Um, it's like the minute I saw it, it was like, I'm so stupid. So let's take a look at it um, in the pizza classes. And remind me, I'll bring this up in Java class tomorrow as well, because I posted an announcement to both of them. So, all right. This code here is, is wrong if size equals S, okay? The reason it is wrong, and again, it only manifests itself in certain situations, 
But really, when you're comparing objects, you're comparing pointers. And as such, this is not a valid expression. I should say if size dot equals S. Yeah, so yeah, I, I made that mistake. Uh, again, the manner in which we were testing it in the Java class didn't expose this flaw. And the w way that some of you coded it didn't expose this flaw. Apparently you ran into it and you ran into it. Uh, but I do apologize for that and I'll make a point to talk about this in the Java class um, tomorrow. All right. So that was, the that was the reason why yours didn't work. Because you were, as soon as you do that, well, I, I did that just for get cost and it, it priced the pizzas correctly. So your code was correct. It was my class that was, that was bad. Yes? Um, yeah. Yeah. In, in a nutshell, the issue is, is you're comparing pointers and not values. And therefore, this isn't. A valid. This this doesn't do what I thought it would do, or it doesn't do like what it would do in in other languages. All right, let's look at the. Did I close on that? No, I moved Android Studio. All right, one of the questions we had is what's up with all these little yellow tick marks on the side. Those are warnings, and specifically, those can relate to just about anything. All right, so I can't give a pat answer about what that is. As a general rule, though, the little, little tick marks off to the side will not stop it from compiling. So like, for example, there there's one, there there's one, and so on. If you want to see the specifics of it, you can click on it. For example, if I click on this one, hard to get your mouse right on it, but there it's telling me that I have an import statement that is not used. All right? In other words, I don't have any table views or text layouts, or I'm sorry, table layouts or text views, and yet I've imported them. So it's, it's warning me about that. Um, that doesn't like really cause a problem. It won't keep it from compiling. It won't keep it from executing, but it's probably something you should clean up. Yes? Ever's a long time. Pardon me? That's, that's a good question. Typically, it is not. The only thing I'm thinking of is if you weren't trapping an exception. Oh, well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, deprecated methods, it's liable to show a warning for. And it's liable to show a warning if you cast something as something else. Um, simply because if you cast something, there's a chance that whatever you're casting might not be the thing that you think it is. And it might show you a warning for that. Um, and, and so that could potentially cause a runtime situation if it wasn't what it is. But for the most part, no, it wouldn't be a problem. What's this one? This one, this one actually annoyed me. <laughs> because it tells me the if statement can be replaced with, and it shows me another way of writing that statement. So what? All right, you know, you're going you're gonna to whine at me because you would have written it differently? Well, exactly, exactly. It's like, I don't, I don't get that, you know, why it even bothers. But it's educational. You can look and you can pick up programming. Let's see. Do you get extra points for a blue tick mark? No, because it does that automatically. It means that, that, that this um, stub was automatically generated. I, 
I think those are the three warnings, the two imports and that. But if you did something like declared a variable but never used it, if I said int x equals 1 and I never used x anywhere in there, it's going to give me a warning. All right. So the bottom line is look at the warnings. Probably good practice to clean them up. Um, if you're not sure what it means, ask. But, you know, it probably won't affect the running of your code if, if it compiles and, um, and just run and test it. All right. Just, yeah, go ahead. Mm hmm Okay, well, let's, let's bring it up. No, no, it, it does not relate to that. Because if anything, I, I could keep, um, that would be a different issue, all right? Um, this issue is just mechanically the way that you declare, the uh, strings are actually, even though they sort of act like primitives, and you can use them like primitives, they're really not primitives, they're, 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 a, they're an object. And therefore, if I say that two objects are equal, all right, that doesn't mean the values of those two objects are equal. All right, for primitives, things like integers and booleans and, and that sort of thing, if I say int 1, int i equals 1, I can say if i equals 1, because all a primitive is is a value. All right, a object, though, is actually a pointer to where everything about that object lives. So. If I say if size equals w, it's actually comparing two pointers. It's comparing the pointer of the size variable and the pointer of this guy here, which may or may not be, depending on how the string was created, because some people didn't have this problem, all right? Depending on how the string created, that could, turn, that could return false when actually you'd expect it to return true. So the workaround for this would be to do it like that. Um, if you're still working on this, let me know and I'll work with you to change, um, to change this. All right, next issue. Looking for built-in methods, not knowing if something is in Java or something is in Android. All right, and that's a good question. Um, and that's a question that there probably is not a pat answer to, but we can sort of give some guidelines, all right? The more general purpose the task seems, the more likely it is to be just a basic Java question. The more Android-y that it seems, the more likely it is to be in the Android framework. So for example, something about a view. All right, how do I put a view on a screen? Well, that sounds like something specific to Android because I'm talking about an, uh, within a, an Android activity putting a view within the screen. That sounds like an Android thing. Uh, one second. If I talk about how do I add leading zeros to something, well, that doesn't seem particularly associated with Android. Therefore, um, I would say that that probably relates to general Java. So things related to the views, things related to the activity are likely to be associated with Android, whereas things that's just related to processing array list, processing strings, processing numbers, and so on are likely to be more specifically Java. Yes. Yes, these activities are Android, right. I mean, it is possible in other frameworks there are things called activities, but the kinds of activities that we're talking about in here are Android activities. All right. 
So if you think about this, you know, inflating something, all right, inflating something, and again, I realize that this is not, you know, I can't give a, a cut and dried um, definitions of this, but inflating something, that to me sounds like something specific to Android, because I'm talking about pulling an Android resource file and creating Android views from it, all right. So that's going to be part of the Android framework, to add something to a view. All right. Whereas, again, how do I loop through an array list? Well, array lists aren't particular, aren't specific to Android. That's just a basic data structure. All right. And therefore, it's more apt to be Java. So that would be sort of my first thing. Is it something related to a view? Because much of what we do in this class is stuff related to views. So if it's related to a view, it's probably related, it's probably an Android thing. Uh, likewise, if it's related to an activity, um, it's probably uh, an Android thing. If it's something related to gestures, you know, touching, tapping the screen, or swiping the screen, or something like that, it's probably Android. So a lot of the UI-ish kind of things are going to be Android, where a lot of the more um, extensive processing is likely to be um, on the Java side. All right. Question about adding leading zeros to a number. So in other words, I'm assuming that you want is if you display the number as, you know, someone has a student number of One, two, three, four, five. If all student numbers are six digits, you want to display it as zero, one, two, three, four, five. Or if they were student number five, six, seven, you'd want to display it as zero, zero, five, six, seven. First of all, does that sound like an Android or a Java question? That's a Java question. There's really nothing about that that implies that it's related to a specific view. This is just specific sort of programming stuff. All right. Now, I have to admit, I have no idea how to do this. Well, let me rephrase that. I kind of do have an idea how to do this. I know two ways how to do this. All right. I know how I could write a function to do it. All right. I guess it would depend on what I wanted to use that for. If I wanted it simply to display it, like here's the student's record and their student number is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then I'm, I, you know, you could write a function to make it into a string, right? And look at the length of the string and then for every, um, for every character it is less than the number that you wanted, 6 for example, you would loop through and you'd concatenate a leading 0 to it. So the algorithm for that would look something like this. If I have a string, I'd give my function a string and an integer saying how big the output should be. I would look at the length of the string or, let's say, a number. And then an integer that says how big the output should be. I'd convert the number to a string. All right. I would get the length of the string. I would find how many zeros are needed by taking how big it should be minus the length. Then I'd have a for loop that said for int i equals zero, i less than how many zeros I need, i plus plus, I'd go in and then take and say string equals leading zero concatenated with string. All right, and that would 
that would do what I needed to. So I'd write this function and I would just form it that way. So that is my fallback plan, all right, to do this. If I can't figure out a better way to do it, I do this. All right, what do I mean by a better way? Well, a way that I don't have to do so much work, uh, all right, something that's built in, right? And why is that a better way? Well, it's been, now this is not a particularly complicated operation. I'm, I'd be pretty confident that I could whip this together in a couple of minutes. But if it was something more involved, all right, you probably want to use a built-in routine because a built-in routine has probably been more thoroughly tested than any code that you would write. All right, and it would ensure doing things in a consistent manner and so on. So in a minute here, we're going to go and look for a built-in method to do something like this. Yes, go ahead. Strings are objects, yes. Um, I don't know. You probably can. You might be able to. Because um, I, I know you can concatenate strings and numbers. And when you do system out dot print ln, you're concatenating it. But whatever you would do, you would convert. There's some way to convert a number to a string. That's what you'd do. You probably can just say string. E well, you might be able to say string s equals one, or you might say well, actually, probably not. Maybe string. I don't know. There's a method, I'm sure, to do that. All right? But if I could find a built-in method to do all this, um, that would really be what I really want. So what am I doing here? I'm actually I'm formatting the numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and Google Java format numbers. And I'm going to see if Or I might go for the home run and Google Java format number leading zeros. Looky here. Adding leading zeros. And essentially, they have my routine up here, the one that I described. All right? And, of course, we get people moaning about someone asked us a question already. And there actually is a string format method that goes and takes the string, and if you do that, it would convert it to a formatted. Exactly. You have to, and again, the amazing thing is, and I mean, I guess that's the internet. I mean, you go to YouTube even, like, and you'll have like a classical music performance, something that you would think would be the least controversial thing. You like it or you don't, you know, and, and I mean, and then you, you just see all these things. It, it sometimes makes me feel bad for humanity reading some of those things. Yes. Have you ever got that? You got a lot of I, uh, um... I've not gotten any. I've not gotten any horrible comments. I've gotten comments. Um, I've gotten comments that said I say all right an awful lot. All right, which, all right, which I just did there without even thinking. Uh, in a, uh, I haven't gotten a comment on that, but maybe you'll be a first. All right. So uh, I've gotten that comment. I had someone say. How is this guy running SQL on a Mac? And I kind of blasted that person because I said, look, first of all, you know, <laughs> SQL is SQL, right? You can run it on any platform. Secondly, I wasn't even running it. I would just have my lecture notes on my Mac and I was like doing it off of this computer. 
and like kind of like go back to school before you complain about what I'm doing on a Mac, essentially. Um, and then I get some complaints about like the resolution of it or the quality of it, which is kind of out of my hands. So I, I've not gotten any really horribly negative ones, uh, comments, thank goodness, knock on wood. But it's still early. I don't know. Um, I hope that isn't taken as an invitation for people to be. And, and, the, and I have gotten a lot of fairly good comments. For the most part, my database design videos are the ones that generate the most traffic. It's probably one of the most generic topics, a topic that a lot of people would be interested in. So some of my other stuff get a, a trickling of comments here and there, but the database design stuff typically gets a ton of comments and, and a ton of hits rather and then a few comments. All right. So it is good to look at something like this and try to figure out a predefined way first. All right. Because there's a lot of stuff that's in the framework, but you always have sort of as a last resort the fact that you can code it if you need to. All right. So that is looking for built-in methods and leading zeros, I think. Mm -hmm. A string format. You specify a format and then the number that you want to format and it sort of applies that format to this. And if we look, and again people are going to complain about that, all right. There are many locales that don't use Arabic numerals 0 through 1. Wow. Java string Format. And they show a whole bunch of that's actually doing formatting a different way. This allows you, for example, to add like words to a number. Um, and so on. So that will tell you the full description of how you can format um, the, the strings. The last thing I have on the list is inflating. So let's look at the inflating again, because I know that's a very confusing thing. All right? I, 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 I know it is. All right? So we'll go over it again. And what I want to do is, what I'm going to do is we'll do it this way. All right? Um, each instruction, we're going to look at the instructions for inflating one at a time. And each instruction, I'm going to ask you guys to tell me what it does. All right, in the inflating. So I'm going to look at this here. Take this, this method. Um, I, 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 yeah, um, I will switch over at some point. All right, this is a code to create a new card. All right, in my layout. What does this do? It's a card object. Well, it sets it to whatever the next card in the deck is. D is a, a variable, D is an attribute of my activity, which is a deck. So, D.getCard asks the deck for the next card. 
So that will give me a card object. Now again, a card object is one that I can ask two things of. I can ask for the suit and I can ask for the value of the card. Those are the two things, interestingly enough, that I need to display the card because each of the images is stored in a folder whose name is the name of the suit and whose value is the value of the card per my class. So the two of clubs is in the file 2PNG. The queen of clubs is in queen.png in the clubs folder. All right, so I now have that card, and it's sitting in a pointer called C. Layout inflator, inflator equals blah, 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 blah. Could I write that statement myself? Not if you put a gun to my head. All right? But you should know what it does. And what does that do? All right? It creates the tool that you're going to use to do this whole process, all right, which is called a layout inflator. And the name of our specific tool is going to be inflator. So there's a lot of classes in the platform that help you to do things. All right? It can't do everything for you, but it can help you do some things. And the layout inflator is one of those. Now, would I expect this to be an Android thing or a Java thing? It's an Android thing, right? Because it relates to adding views to an activity, to views and other activities, blah, blah, blah. View sort of things are typically going to be Android things. All right? And we do it by getting system service. That's also a tip off. What system are we on? We're on an Android system and so on. Another clue that we could get is if we look at the import for the layout inflator, it's android.view layout inflator. That's our other clue that this is an Android thing. So now we have the tool that we call inflator that is going to do our thing. We declare a variable for the new image. This image is going to be, eventually, is going to contain the image that we put in the, on, the, on, the, on the card table, all right, in the, in the view on the card table. All right. It's going to be the image that corresponds to this card object. So we have two things at work. And, and this is important for the next thing that we're going to talk about after we finish the inflation. We have a card object, and we have an image that corresponds to that card object. All right? You wouldn't have to have an image that corresponds to it, right? You could display in words that they had the queen of hearts or the, the jack of diamonds or something like that. But that wouldn't be a very fun game. Or if we were simulating blackjack or something like that. Maybe we don't actually need the actual images to display on the screen. Maybe we can just run through some random simu simulations and see how many games we win or lose. All right? So the one is a UI thing. The other is a problem domain thing. So the image view is a UI thing. It's how we're going to show to the outside world a representation of the card that we have. What does this section of code do? I added last time this if statement in here. What this does is this allows for the overlapping of cards. So, oh, is that what you figured out? yeah, to overlap the cards like that. What am I doing? Well, I cheated and I have two different XML files, one for the first card, one for every other card. All right, and the one for the first card does not have any margin on it. The one for every other card has a negative margin. So if we look at, we have card, and we have next card. The difference is the first, I'm sorry, first card and card. First card has no margin. Each subsequent card has a margin of negative 40. So instead of putting them 
side by side, it bumps it over 40 to the 40 dp to the left, a negative margin, and that gets the cards to overlap. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm deciding which card view I want to have. All right. And, and in either case, it creates the image view, new card, it creates the image view by inflating the proper XML file. And in one case, it, in this case, it, it um, inflates the first card layout. In this case, it um, inflates the subsequent card layout. P hand layout, get child count is telling me how many views are in this area here, the darker green. In other words, how many cards it is. Uh, and if there's zero cards in, it puts that first card with no margin. If, it, if it's the second, third, or fourth card, it, it shifts the margin over to the left. Well, good question. If I wanted to display, let's say I was, if, if I was dealing between the dealer and the player, do I need a different XML file for the dealer and player? No. All right. What's going to be different? What's going to be different is this last statement down here that we'll get to. Here I'm saying put the card image in the player's handout or, or uh, uh, a layout. If I had a dealer, I would then put it in the other layout. In fact, we can write that code in a couple minutes here to, uh, to, to do that once we finish through the inflation example. All right. Well, the, the code for the random card is in the deck class. The deck class, remember one of the things that we do when we create the deck, we call the shuffle method. And the shuffle method is just like a shuffle method that a person would do. It takes and shuffles up the card. And then each time you deal, you pick the top card off. That effectively will be a random card because we've shuffled it up. Shuffle is a built-in method in the... ArrayList uh, class, thank you. So if we look here in the deck class, we see that we initialize the deck. We've created the 52 cards. Right after we create them, we shuffle them. So then we can ask for the next card. We can ask for the top card each time through, just like a human dealer would give the top card each time through. And that effectively will be a random card because we shuffled the cards. Okay. We're then using these things to grab the image file and create an image from the appropriate file. Again, these are like the inflator. These are things that we didn't write, but they're tools that we can use to grab the contents of a file and create an image from it. Here I'm opening that file. And what's the name of the file? Well, from the card we get the suit, a slash, and then from the card we get the name. So one of the things that the card can return is it can return its suit. Another thing it can return is the name of the card. All right, so what we do is we simply um, open up that file name in the stream. We then, from that, we create a drawable from that stream
and we set the image to uh, we set the image view as image associated with the image view to the image that we pull from that file. So when we are done here, new card is an image view that has the proper image of the card in it. The last step we have to do is we have to go and add that to the player's layout. And that's what this step does. Up to this point, we're creating that new, car, new image view, and it just lives in memory. It doesn't belong anywhere, though. In this last step, we actually add that image view to the player's um, hand, if you will. Questions about this? Any of these lines unclear? You know, you can, you, some of these lines, again, it's funny because some of these lines I expect you to sort of understand. Some of these lines I don't necessarily expect you to understand. Just know that this is what you do to open up a file that's out there. You supply the name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's an image that can be drawn on the screen. It's something that can be drawn on the screen. Right. So you make it, you make it, you make it using the contents of the file, then you associate that drawable with the um, um, image view. Where, here? That's, that's to separate the folder from the file name. So if I look out on disk, the, the two of clubs is in a folder called clubs slash 2.png. All right, let's go and let's add a dealer section to the layout. And let's make our, let's make our, our uh, dealing code a little more sophisticated so it gives, it alternates between giving a card to the player, a card to the dealer, a card to the player, a card to the dealer. So what am I going to have to change to do that? So what I want is instead of one area here, I want a second one here. To represent the dealer. And every time I, I press hit, I want to alternate between those two. So the first thing I have to do is I have to add to the XML file. So I'm going to go in this guy and I'm just going to copy this guy. And I'm going to change it because this is this has an ID of P hand or this has an ID of hand layout. I'm going to call it D hand layout for the dealer's hand. Pardon me? Um because I have a because my minimum API is set too low. My minimum API is set to 8 when it should be set to 14. So it's warning me that if you tried to run this on an earlier version of Android, it wouldn't know what that is. Yes. In this case, and again, it, that's context dependent, but in this case, the, what would you call this, magenta is the namespace. All right. The blue is the attribute, and the green is the value of the attribute. That's pretty consistent. At least, no idea. All right. So. What's the next thing I have to do? Well, I have to grab a pointer to that. So I'm going to create another variable in my activity that's called D hand layout. 
And I'm going to find it in my view based on the ID. All right. So now I have code for any activity to point to that layout. I added it to the XML. Now I have code to point to it. So what I'm going to do, oh, to, to D here, right. Thank you. I'm going to create a Boolean. B player's turn, and we're going to set it equal to true. What that means is the player's turn. Okay? Then each time I deal, I'm going to switch that from true to false, or false to true. Question, or? How would you do it? No, I just, I'm going to try Okay. Okay. Exactly. The more you model real life, the... Okay. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to go in and over here. I, it was just disconcerting. It was like, did I make a bonehead mistake or something? You know, and, and I'm looking. So, give player a card here. Guess what? If B player's turn... If it's a player's turn, I'm going to add it to the player's view. Otherwise, I'm going to add it to the dealer's view. And then I'm going to say... The player's turn equals not B player's turn. What does that statement do? It changes it from true to false, false to true. So whatever player's turn is, I'm making it the opposite of that. Pardon me? Exclamation point. Exclamation point is not. So, B player's turn equals not B player's turn. The opposite of B player's turn. Now, you can only do that with a Boolean, right? Because a Boolean has an opposite. True's opposite is false. False's opposite is true. Can't do that with a string. You know, what's the opposite of a string? I don't know. It doesn't even make sense. Or a number. So, this is a quick way to toggle between true or false each time. So, let's run this and hope that it works. Go ahead. Yes, I should. Good call. So now in our emulator, we're going to have, we should have two of those stripes that we'll see. So I get a hit and added it to the player. Boom, hit. Not showing anything in there. So good. All right, let's troubleshoot that. First thing I want to do is I'm going to look at the XML.
There's one more thing. I thought about changing, but I thought I could get away with not changing. Let me change that. Ah, here's probably a problem. I am going to go and I'm going to get rid of the staggered card just in the interest of time. And I'm going to say if the player's turn else. The hand layout. Okay, let's see if that does any good for me. Yeah, I know. Just be an extra if statement to put back in, though. problem is it's not seeing I'm thinking my problem is with my XML file I would not be surprised if the one isn't underneath the other one I think so Let's go, let's go and switch the order of these. And let me go and let me make it the dealer's turn first. Let's see if we still have the same problem. All right, there's the dealer's card. So it, in fact, is a problem with the layout that they are overlapping each other. Because if I switch the dealer and that, that works out OK. I am going to, that's exactly what I was going to do, get rid of the scroll view. So I'm thinking the scroll view is messing me up. Ah. We'll try that next. Ah, my clear only clears the one. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll fix this and I'll post what was wrong with it. Um, I'm virtually certain it is a layout issue.
but I don't want to bore you by sitting here and debugging. If anything interesting comes up, I will let you know. In fact, what I probably will do is I'll probably just hang out after class and fix it. And uh, I'll probably, what, what I'll do, if you want, is I'll, I'll finish the lecture, you know, and then we'll go off camera and we'll do it afterwards. That way, there'll be a benefit for those of you who actually pay for the class. You get to see the answer for this. Everyone who's watching the videos for free, then it will be a cliffhanger for them and they won't know. All right, and they'll be motivated to enroll. So uh, I'm going to exit, finish the lecture, and then I'm going to fix this, and then I'll have time for any questions that you have. All right.